Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Friday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and the Mets lost last night. Surprise, surprise. They dropped to a season worst 18 games under 500 with the loss to the Braves. Um, not a terrible game, but certainly no offense to speak of. That's not surprising at this point in the season. I want to talk about last night's game. I want to talk about the debut of Mr. Wall, who I can't stop thinking about, Robert Wool. But uh, I want to talk about that and uh, the weekend ahead. So the Mets lost 4-2 to two last night um, behind Jason Vargas, who... I guess at this point we can say wasn't terrible. Um, you know, he only he only gave up four runs, which you know, for Vargas is is not bad. He did lower his ERA like a half a point, so he's just around eight now. Fabulous. Um, but once again, the issues with the Mets' offense reared their heads, and the Mets just cannot hit to save their lives. Um, you had the first inning home run by Brandon Nimmo and um, not a whole hell of a lot else to speak of offensively. And that's been the story of the season. Um, you know, four runs given up by the starting pitcher is not great. But, you know, that's sort of what you expect, you know, three to four runs out of your number five starter. And for a change, Vargas actually delivered that. Um, he, again, he didn't look terrible. He had a lot of strikeouts. Uh, I think he had seven strikeouts on the night, which... Um, you know, not bad, but, uh, you know, the offense continues to be the problem. Todd Frazier returns from the DL last night to shore up the defense a little bit and provide some, I don't know, veteran guidance, I guess, on the field, but um, certainly an 0 for 4 in Frazier's return was less than stellar. Um, but, you know, it is what it is at this point. As I said, the Mets are now 18 games under 500. They, uh, they are positioning themselves to have a high draft pick. Uh, that's, you know, silver lining, I guess. I don't know. Um, not that draft picks mean a whole lot in baseball. It, it's such a crapshoot to draft, um, you know, a, a, a guy who's going to be a, a lockdown prospect for you. Um, the, you know, the Mets over the last few years have not drafted poorly, but they haven't drafted great either. It's not like, you know, it's not like they're the Braves where they're getting these 19 and 20 year olds to come up to the big leagues and, be big league ready you know you, you get to see it in Atlanta with uh, Acuna and Albies who just look like they're veterans who look like they understand the game there, there's no learning curve for them and the same cannot be said really from for any of the guys the Mets seem to call up um, from their prospect pool uh, Rosario you know is having an okay season but he certainly doesn't appear to be that, you know, big league ready bat that the Mets were hoping that they would get. And even, frankly, his defense hasn't been superb either. So, uh, you know, it would be nice if the Mets could actually get some production out of one of their prospects, um, like immediate production. That would be lovely, but it just doesn't seem to happen for the Mets. You know, a few years ago when they called up Conforto from Double A, um, he came up and, and made an immediate difference. And then he sort of dwindled off a little bit and got injured and um, whatever. It just it, it, he, he, The Mets have never been able to get that. I shouldn't say never. Uh, haven't recently been able to get that young impact player outside of the pitching staff that uh, they've called up over the last three, four years. Um, speaking of pitching, uh, another silver lining from last night's loss was the bullpen. Uh, the bullpen was very good last night. They uh, didn't give up any runs. I mean, that's that's almost unheard of out of the Mets bullpen. And newly acquired Bobby Wall from the uh, from the uh, Oakland A's, who the Mets got back in return for the familiar trade. Um, he made his debut last night. He looked very good. Uh, you can see that high upside fastball that he that he has, 98, 99 miles an hour, um, and it looked like he had four pitches in his uh, appearance last night. Uh, but Keith was spot on when he said he doesn't need four pitches. He just needs to develop that breaking ball to uh, to complement the fastball. Uh, you know, it looks like with these young arms that the Mets have 
um, stockpiled over the last two seasons when they were trading guys at the deadline, it looks like they're trying to do what they should be trying to do, which is to build up some young, inexpensive bullpen arms and options. And, it, you know, Wall looks like a guy who can be added to that. I think Tyler Bashler has shown in his, uh, in his limited time this year that he may be one of those guys as well. So we're going to have to see how that plays out over the next, you know, year or so. But it's looking like the Mets are at least building a bullpen that is controllable so that they can avoid having to go out and sign another Anthony Swarzak, who of late has been better. But let's be honest, I mean, he's making way too much money to just be getting better. And that's always been the problem with acquiring bullpen arms via free agency. They are so volatile and they have so many ups and downs from one season to the next. It's really tough to pay these guys the, the kind of money they want. I mean, look at the Colorado Rockies, as I've mentioned a few other times. Um, they spent a ton of money this offseason on bullpen, and their bullpen hasn't been great. At least the guys they went on acquired haven't been great. So I, I like the fact that the Mets are building up these young arms, and I'm hoping that that's something that they can lean on a little bit and invest money elsewhere because Lord knows um, if the Mets really do want to contend next year, they have got to start investing money in players who can play both sides of the ball in position. And, uh, you know, the, the guy, Gary, Keith, and Ron last night were talking about the Phil Evans injury. And Evans will more than likely be out for the rest of the season. But the comments that they made last night about a guy who can play all over the place but maybe shouldn't, um, you know, just because you can put a, uh, put a warm body at second base doesn't mean that player is good enough or experienced enough to play second base. And the point they were making was Evans got injured last night because he, uh, the other night rather, or the other day, because he, he was, he's not an experienced second baseman. He was out of position and it got him hurt. And if the Mets are serious about contending, their defense has to get better. And at the same time, their offense needs to get better. Tall task. But, you know, John Rico yesterday said, we absolutely plan to contend in 2019. And, uh, you know, it's nice to hear that. That's great. And I think we, we'd all love that. But it, it, it's just words. Um, and the problem that I have with them saying this is not the idea that they're going to try to contend, because they should, but it's the idea that they've not given us any idea of how they plan to try to contend. Um, and, and, you know, repeating the same things they did this year and last year, it's not going to work. The Mets have got to get younger, they've got to get more athletic, and they've got to find players who can play, for example, second base as second baseman. Not as a utility guy who's played some second base in the past and can also slide over to third base. I don't want to see an infield of four guys like that. I want to see the Mets start building an infield of guys who belong in the positions that they're fielding and that can provide the range that the Mets need. Again, I've said this a few times even in this week. The Mets, if, if the Mets are serious about contending, they have to get better defensively. And with, with range, they have to get better defensively. They have to start, you know, this defensive run saved metric that the Sabre guys like to throw out there. The Mets need to start paying attention to that. And as much as I've always been a, you know, defense can be secondary to a, a strong offensive team, um, and the Mets have really tried to, to sort of, uh, you know, use that Sandy Alderson mentality, it hasn't worked. Uh, because it's not like these guys are knocking the cover off the ball. Um, yeah, the back of their baseball cards say they should be able to hit for power, but it hasn't happened. You know, Todd Frazier's had a miserable season. Jay Bruce has missed most of the season. And when he was there, he wasn't himself anyway. So let's get younger, let's get better defense, and let's make that the priority. I would love to hear Rico, or frankly, I'd love to hear Jeff Wilpon come out and say, we're planning to contend next year, and here's what we're going to do. And you don't have to say these are the guys we're going to target, but just make it, you know, a 90-second infomercial about what they're planning to, to try to do to retool this team without rebuilding it. Because clearly they're not rebuilding. They're going to try to build around these pitchers, which they should do. But let's hear how they're going to do it. I want to hear a plan. And I don't know that we're going to get that. 
and I'd like to think that they have a plan that's different from the plan that hasn't worked in 2017 and now again in 2018. But again, until we see it, we, we really don't know. So I, I, I'd love to give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but this is really, it's a really um, difficult situation because you're going to have a new GM coming in to take over for the interim three-headed monster GM that they have now. And that makes it tough for these three guys and for the fourth guy, if it's a new guy or if it's one of the three, it makes it difficult for them to make the right kinds of personnel moves now because you don't know what the new guy is going to have in mind. You know, it's tough. It's a very tough situation. And looking at some of the returns that a few of the teams who did deal at the deadline and uh, focusing, I want to focus on Chris Archer. They're looking at what the Pirates gave up for, uh, for Chris Archer, they didn't give up a whole, a whole hell of a lot. You know, they gave up a, a pitching prospect, and I don't even want to call him a prospect, they gave up a pitcher and an outfielder. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that that return was good enough for the Mets to have traded any of their pitchers. You know, Archer's under control for the next three years. And if, if that was the return for, for a guy like Archer, what, what would the Mets have gotten back for Zach Wheeler or Noah Syndergaard? You know, you don't, you just don't know. And t to criticize the Mets for holding on to these pitchers, not rebuilding, uh, is unfair because you just don't know what the offers were, if there were any legitimate offers anyway. So again, I want to see a plan laid out. I want to hear what the plans are, and I, I want to see that sooner rather than later because if they're going to try to build any sort of um, confidence from the fan base, they're going to need to do that in, in short order because I know that I'm frustrated and I'm pretty passive when it comes to uh, you know turning on the team. I, I, I can't imagine how a lot of Mets fans and Mets Twitter in particular are feeling at this point. So the Mets have three more this weekend. Uh, tonight, DeGrom um, is on the mound and hopefully Jake can get some run support. I won't hold my breath on that, but I'm looking forward to watching Jake pitch because it's one of the few joys that we have left as, as Mets fans. So uh, I will be back. I, I'm not sure if I'll be back before Tuesday of next week, um, but I'll be back to try to recap the Brave series and perhaps the first game of the Reds series as well. So uh, until that time, whenever it may be, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.